knew from the beginning of creation, he has not forgot about that lineage. Scattered, dispersed, called Negro, called nigger, called by words and proverbs, sent to the four corners of the earth, mixed in, Hellenized, sausage, egg and cheese biscuits, pork chops, running in Coliseum games, shooting each other on the street, gang violence, bloods, crips, homicide rape, poor health, leading in cardiovascular disease. Y'all said I ain't forgot about my people. The nations may forget, but I ain't gonna forget. I ain't gonna forget about the transatlantic. I ain't gonna forget about Alligator Bay. I ain't forget, gonna forget about Willie Lynch and Lynch Negroes and Piccaninnies. I ain't gonna forget. And that's the power of a living God that took a book that was always ours and made the enemy think, oh, this is for everybody. Just so he could get that book to the four corners of the earth so that when he woke up the remnant of his people that were scattered because of their disobedience, he could wake them up with a snap of a finger. That's the love we're gonna talk about in this video, y'all. What's a busy dynasty? This is your boy, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. JB Zion. Y'all show me some love. Welcome back to the channel. And where we dropping y'all with another bang, y'all. Praises be to the Most High Yah. Shalom to all my Israelite brothers, sisters, my wonderful supporters. I love you guys. We could not do this stuff without you guys. I'm telling you, every comment I take to my heart. Shalom to all my Gentile brothers as well, my Gentile brothers and sisters. I know that there's a lot of you guys that support us as well. I'm telling you guys, every comment that you guys comment, be right when I'm about to sink into despair. Right when I be like, man, I don't know if I'm equipped to teach. I mean, I don't know if I'm the most articulate or if I say got the most scriptures or the most facts or the most graphics or all this stuff, y'all. But I sincerely mean that me and Shawnee D, without you guys, none of this would be made possible. And I know a lot of you guys that, that have been watching on the journey. Y'all go ahead and subscribe, man. Go ahead and join the journey, right? Go ahead and like that video up. Share it. Spread the word. We're just dealing with heritage, y'all. The, the purpose of Zion Dynasty is to let our people know that they come from something great. Let us know about our Israelite roots and the West African tribes that we come from, right? And that we need to love one another, right? That, 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 that don't buy into all the sauce that the media and J. Edgar Hoover's system and Babylon tries to make black people look like we just a no good people with no history and that, that all we do is hate one another. The purpose of this channel is to make it fun, to make learning the, the mysteries of the scripture just exciting and that kind of thing. That's why we do this, y'all. I know it's a lot of other teachers out. I'm just trying to put my brick on the wall and I learn from so many of these brothers. I'm telling y'all, I'll be like a student with my pen out writing down precepts. And I just thank you guys for supporting us and believing in Zion Dynasty. So you guys, as you saw in the title, this is the part, I think part three to the True Love series where we're dealing with the second commandment, right? Which is to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now I know I've already mentioned this in the previous videos, but that's why I did that, to show you guys that each commandment builds upon the other. The first commandment we looked at was to love the Lord thy God, Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? And the second one is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. In the previous video, y'all check that out if you ain't watched it, we saw that the key, the hidden, the secret commandment is to love yourself, right? Because we love God, which is the first commandment, because we know how much we mean to the Most High. We know how much He loves us and how much He showed His faithfulness to us despite ourselves, right? And the second commandment is the same thing. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But we're gonna deal with that neighbor part. Now, to go ahead and get the elephant out the room, a lot of you guys are like, well, well, JB, you talking about Israel and this and that. That second commandment show you that that don't matter. You're supposed to love your neighbor. That don't mean it don't matter what his race is and that kind of thing. Let's go ahead and put that scripture on the screen, shall we? In Matthew chapter 22, it reads that the second is like unto it, to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now, a lot of you guys are looking at that word neighbor and you're like, what does this have to do with community? What does this have to do with Israel? That, that don't say that. That means anybody, anybody. You love your neighbor, right? Let's go to the Old Testament to see that this is merely a re-echoing of a previous verse in the Holy Scriptures. I gotta let you guys know, there is nothing new in the New Covenant. I know that sounds weird, but everything in the so-called New Testament has, is a fulfillment or a living fulfillment 
of Torah, of the laws and the statutes and the prophets and the Psalms, right? So for this neighbor, let's go to Leviticus chapter 19, beginning at verse 17. Let's get it. So in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17, it reads, Thou shalt not hate thy brother. Whoa, interesting. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. For thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Now let's deal with verse 17 because that, that dropped a lot of bombs, y'all. It says don't hate your brother in your heart, right? I think a lot of the gossip and the Mickey Mouse stuff that goes on in our community is because we're not real with one another. We don't have a standard. So this person thinks this, this person thinks that. So none of us really feel like we can really address one another, right? Openly, because we don't have a standard. When we get to the point that we know that we're Israel and we know that the law, statutes, the Torah is our standard, then we go to our brother, right? You go to your brother in, in private. You don't do it openly to make, make some big scene and all that gossip like he tells you one thing in confidence and then you go spread it aloud. It's wickedness, y'all. The Bible is saying that you don't hate your brother in your heart, but you go to your brother and you let your brother know what your complaint is. That's what Yeshua said. He said, if you have any fault against your brother, you go to them privately and you're open and you're honest about it, right? That's what we as a people need. When we're talking about love in our community, there's a lot of sen senseless crime and a lot of killing and a lot of backbiting and a lot of backstabbing that happens with so-called Crayola color black people who are really Israelites, it happens because there's a lack of communication. Open, honest communication. Check this out, y'all. So the serpent was able to go to Eve and convince Eve to do something against what God told Adam to do. How was he able to do that? Because Eve and Adam were compromised. When you have a cement brick wall, no serpent can get in between the mortar and be able to divide Two people that are unified as one flesh. That's what the Most High told us as a people to be, and that starts in the home. Now, that's going to be the next video, y'all, where we deal with these two shall be one flesh. That husbands and wives should be on one accord in every area. Open and honest with their finances. Open and honest with their shortcomings. So we see that when you have a problem with your brother, you go to your brother. You don't suffer sin upon your people, right? So now let's go back to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. So it says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in your heart. You're supposed to love your people. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Now that neighbor is still, you got to go back to the A part, is still in context with the brother. Thou shalt not hate thy brother. So when it says thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, it's still talking about thy brother, which is your people and not suffer sin upon him all praises verse 18 says thou shalt oh my baby girl <laughs> thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people Skirt! wait a second y'all that word is living y'all the torah gives us as a people, everything that we need to rebuild and to have that unity and to have that love with one another. The scriptures make it plain. Do not hate, have any grudge or bear any kind of grudge against your brother in your heart, right? Or against the children of your people. Now let's go back to the second part. It says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the most high. Yah. All praises be to the most high. Now what it's saying is, now you see how it first said, don't bear any grudge against the children of your people. But then it said, but thou shalt love thy neighbor. So what is it saying? That the children of thy people is the neighbor. Y'all understand this. If you look at black people today, most black people live in neighborhoods with black people. Now I know there are real outliers where you have a few black families that live in a predominantly white neighborhood. You're always gonna have outliers. But for the most part, during the history that Yeshua was on the scene, during that time frame. He was dealing with the Judean people. For the most part, these Judeans were Israelites. So when he said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as you love yourself, which is the second greatest commandment, mind you, he's saying that the second greatest commandment is to love the children of thy people, to love your brother, to love your sister. So let me get this straight. We've seen that the greatest commandment is to love the most high, 
keep his law, statutes, and commandments by knowing how much he loves us and has preserved our history. The 1.5 is to love yourself because that's how you love the most high. And then the 1.5 says you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that don't mean two halves make a whole. It means a whole person can genuinely meet another whole person and love that person because they are secure and they're whole within themselves. So when we read the neighbor part, this is dealing with God, yourself, and your people. This is the greatest commandment. These are the greatest commandments, rather. To love God, love yourself, and love your people, right? Now, when we look at that love your people part, you got to look at what the scripture says. It says, don't suffer sin upon your people. So you got to understand, when you love your people, you tell them the truth. We didn't got this misconception where, oh, they holy rollers. Oh, they judging me. Oh, the Israelites think that they perfect. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you what the Bible says. You got to watch out for folks that want to make you feel good. That ain't love. Big mama did say things to make you feel good. She wants you to feel good, but she wants you to really be good, not just be feeling good. Because sometimes sin will have you feeling good. But when somebody really loves you, right, they tell you the difficult thing. They tell you that we as a people, we got to do better. We got to love one another. We got to turn back to the most highest law, statutes, and commandments. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say that. Because I got to deal with your attitude of, oh, oh, he think he this. And true love means that I know I'm willing to make you mad or piss you the hell off, but I got to tell you the truth as a brother, as your people, right? That is the second greatest commandment. And this is where we fall short as a people. The backbiting exists because we don't sit down with one another and keep it 100. This person didn't even know how you felt because y'all didn't communicate it. But right when you feel some type of way about your brother, you go on Facebook. Y'all y'all don't want to talk to me. You do an Instagram live. And you bash this person when that person like, I don't know what's going on. So then that person re retaliates and you be like, see, I told you they was a snake. I told you they was dead. Because that person don't know what's wrong with you. What you coming against me for? Communication. Satan dwells in the darkness. Roaches, you notice when the light's off, you see them crawling. When you turn the light on, the roaches scatter. Satan operates like that. Where there's confusion, there is darkness. Where there's lack of communication, there is darkness. Now, this is going to lead into our next video, y'all, about the household, the spouse, the black family, black love, which is under attack mainly because of this principle. And the reason that you can't love your neighbor or your community is because you ain't learned it in the house with your significant other. That open, honest communication. Y'all, Shawnee D can tell y'all, my biggest thing when we first got together, y'all, was open, honest communication. Was committed to commitment. She was like, man, you say that all the time. Like, I told her all the time, I said, I'm committed to commitment. Love ain't no feeling, y'all, but you just feel like every day you feel, you wake up and you look to that person that you lying next to and you're like, oh, I just feel so great. Love, that's unrealistic, y'all. <laughs> There's times the most high wanted to cut us off as a people. Love is not a feeling, love is an action. Love is despite how I feel, I treat you a certain way. We think that that's faking. Oh, that's putting on. That ain't, you ain't really vibing with the person at that point no more. Y'all ain't really, you really compatible no more. That's a millennialist mindset. I got to keep it real. I'm a millennial, y'all, but we the ones with the high divorce rates and all this different stuff. Because we, right when we wake up one day and don't feel like it, then we think we ain't in love. When love is an action. When you look at the old school generation, they was married 40 plus years. Why? They didn't feel like it all the time. They probably wanted to kill the other person one day. And we think that that's a less than type of love. You know, they was they was miserable. How you think God feel? How you think the most high feel when he got to deal with us, y'all? And y'all got to keep it straight. We pissed God the hell off. I'm going to tell you the truth, Jack. The most high told Moses, he said, get out of my way, Moses. You praying for these folks. Let me wipe them off the face of the earth because they are stiff-necked people. But Moses interceded and said, don't let the, late, the nation see that you can't love your people. And that's a bash to the Christians. That's talking about Israel done away with. God could have been destroyed us, right? Because we see it with Moses. But God said he wasn't going to do that to his people. And it was mainly because of Moses, who is an image of Yeshua. So what I'm saying is, when you love one another, you're open and honest with them. It ain't a feeling. You keep it 1,000. Even when you don't feel like loving them, you commit it. That's, what, that's why the marriage rate is going down with the young generation. Because right when they don't feel like it, they don't love no more. You are committed to commitment. You don't bear no grudge against your people. Love is not envious. It's not proud. It's not puffed up. You die to yourself daily when you're dealing with your people. Understand, white folks might not agree on everything, but when it comes to coming together against other people, Democrat, Republican, all that stuff is thrown out the window, right? 
they come together against the greater threat, which is another people trying to destroy them as a nation. They know how to single file line come together for a greater cause. And our people need to learn that skill set. You got to support black businesses even though you feel like the price is too high. The reason the price is so high is because we don't support it. We have to die to ourselves. That's the only way the nation going to be a nation as a people. The second greatest commandment is to love your people. Love your brother. Love the children of your people as you love yourself. That means you give yourself for your people. Christ said, no greater love does a man have than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. He was talking about the 12. He was talking about his Galilean road dogs. He was talking about the Judean people. He loved his people to the point that he let the Romans put nails in his wrist. That kind of love, that's the kind of love black people need to have for their people. And that's the gospel. We can't afford to do anything else until we get our own house in order. I'm telling y'all, the Bible says we're worse than an infidel or a robber if you don't first have charity begin at home. You're writing a counterfeit check when in your bank account there's nothing in it. Charity begins at home, y'all. This is Black History Month. Y'all like this video up, comment, share, subscribe, and remember, y'all, we got to unify. We got to stand together. J. Edgar Hoover said that the greatest threat to American security was black unity. Negro unity. What that means is, as soon as our people come together, the Most High will restore the kingdom back unto Israel. So with that, I want to say peace, blessings, black power to the chosen race of the Most High Yah, Yoruba Benai Ephraim, of the tribe of Joseph, of the son of Jacob. I love you all with the love of the Most High. Shalom. All praises.